is going on guys? I am back with another editing tutorial. This was my first time shooting Milky Way this year. This was also my first time shooting with the Sony a7 III. I just picked this camera up last year primarily for video knowing that it was great with shadow detail and unfortunately when I got it it was towards the end of 2018's Milky Way season so I did not get to play with it very much. So in this video I am going to edit this image from scratch. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go down to my lens corrections and remove chromatic aberration. I am also going to do a manual lens correction for the lens profile, which I prefer to do compared to just clicking this enable profile corrections button. And the reason I like doing this is because when I go into my stacking software, I get this crazy moray pattern going on when it tries to stack the images. So. I will go into manual, I will change my vignetting um, around 60, and this is just kind of going to remove some of the dark edges out of the image, and then I'll play with my midpoint just to kind of smooth it out a little bit better, and I will drop that to uh, 16. <clears throat> so after that is done. I'm going to correct my white balance and I actually set my white balance in camera. I had a Hoya light intensifier uh, filter on my lens as well. That's why with all the light pollution that goes on over here, this is coming from Palos Verdes and Santa Monica and where people live. Um, I like to set my temperature, which was 4700. So to make sure that I have it dialed into where it is, I'm going to jack up my vibrance and my saturation to 100%. It's pretty good. What I'm looking for is just kind of an even amount of blue and yellow in the sky as well as magenta and green. And if for some reason I did not like how this looked, I would play with my temperature and my tint. But I'm pretty happy where it is. So I'll reduce that back down to zero and then I will work on my exposure which I'm going to boost up a little bit. I'm gonna bring my highlights down, bring my whites up, and I'm not concerned with my shadows very much because I actually took two longer exposures to deal with uh, with my foreground. So I will just I'll drop my shadows down a bit and then my blacks I'm gonna decrease as well. Uh, I don't really need to play with contrast. It does help a little bit, so maybe I'll boost it up a little bit to 14. And then my clarity, I will bring up to 12. <clears throat> and my vibrance, I will bring up as well. Now that I'm pretty happy with this right here, I actually did 20 exposures because my aperture of f2.0 was at a two second exposure with a really high ISO, which for the Sony, I am cr incredibly happy with. So I'll select all of these and I will sync them. And once that is synced across, I am going to edit this image. I'm going to export these first and then edit in Starry Landscape Stacker. The snack. Ugh. Starry Landscape Stacker. So export. I'm going to export them as TIFFs which basically means that I'm not resizing my image and I'm leaving everything else the same. I'll just name this Leo Carrillo and I am going to export this to folder on here. Now that these have all exported, I am going to open up Starry Landscape Stacker and I am going to select the images that I stacked and then press open. And once these open, I just want to make sure that I'm selecting my sky and not selecting my foreground. So I'm going to add red dots up here around this area. I 
once those are selected, I'm going to press Find Sky. <clears throat> Sorry about my throat. <laughs> um, and with a larger brush, I'm just going to brush in the areas that I want selected. And with my selection pretty much where I want it to be, I am going to click Align with because I actually want to switch which uh, image it's aligned to. And I'm going to choose 15. Not that it makes a big difference, but you can actually change where the alignment is made. So this would be one, and then this would be 20 in the stack. And there's not a huge change. It was a 20 second interval, but you have those options. So I'll choose 15. I'm going to align to current image and then align and save. After the alignment is done, you can see that there's a little bit more contrast going on. And I am then going to just select mean for the algorithm that's going to be applied and press save. And I will save this into the same folder. And I don't want the mask of the sky, it doesn't really matter to me. So I'll press cancel. And once that is done, I am then going to just import this into my library. I'll mark it as five so that I know that it's my sky and it is sitting right there in the timeline and you can see the difference in just the contrast that goes on from doing that um, one thing I've noticed is that there this is right off the road all pretty close to the road so you kind of get headlights that are going on which is lighting these things up right here and with my image it kind of neutralizes most of those lights maybe not so much down here but again I'm not too worried about the foreground uh, there is a little bit of trailing in here, and I am going to go ahead and remove those when I edit my image. But for right now, I'll leave that. That is my sky. Now, these last two images were shot at a far lower ISO for a longer period of time. So ISO 1000 and 20 second exposure. And I am going to pretty much repeat the same steps as I did with editing my sky by going to profile, remove chromatic aberration, manual adjustments, boost that up to 60 or whatever it was, and then drop that down to around 15 or 14. And then I, just to kind of show you the power of the Sony, if I bump my exposure up incredibly, there is just a little bit of noise going on. Um, I mean, this is incredible for shadow detail. I mean, this is at zero exposure boosting, and this is nearly three stops, and it's it's really it's really good. I uh, chat with the uh, Canon 5D Mark IV for a while. I still do, uh, but I tapered off with using it for um, night photography because this this ability is incredible but I don't want my image that bright, so I am going to bring it down for zero, to zero for now. I'm gonna increase my shadows just a little bit, maybe bump my exposure up half a stop, and maybe increase my highlights as well, and the blacks. <clears throat> okay. so, I think I'm pretty happy. Um, I might apply some noise reduction just a little bit. See how that works. Wow, that is beautiful. So I have two of these images, so I am going to apply, I'm gonna sync my settings across. And with that synced, I am now ready to move into Photoshop. So I will right click on the image. What I want to do is also bring in my sky, so I will now go ahead and open as layers in Photoshop. So 
So with those loaded, I am going to move my sky down to the bottom layer and I am going to select my foreground layers. I'm going to right click on it and convert to smart object. And with that converted, I am going to go to layer, smart objects, stack mode, median. And what this is going to do is that any noise that there might be in the foreground, it is going to even it out. So if you look, you have to zoom in to nearly 500% just to see some noise shooting from shooting at ISO 1000. So at roughly 100, it looks nearly flawless and I am pretty happy with this right now. So I'll just name this foreground and then I will name this sky. So with my sky on top, what I want to do is I want to blend my sky onto my foreground, obviously. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to duplicate this layer and add a curves adjustment to it. And what I want to do is focus on the darks so that I can get a, <clears throat> I can make this as dark as possible. So when I make a selection, I am pretty much selecting just the sky and it will make it easier for me to blend. So I will just select these two and uh, merge layers and that is just a little bit, but enough. And I will now go to select color range and I am going to select my highlights. And I'm just gonna play with the fuzziness and range. And with that selection right there, I'm going to drag my foreground, oops, you know what, one thing I need to do is after I made the smart object, I am going to rasterize the layer. You can't, for some reason, do what I want to do with it as a smart object. Maybe you can, I don't know, I just want to rasterize it. So I'm going to go ahead and select color range again, leave the same settings. And with that selected, I am going to bring my foreground to the top layer and just add a layer mask and it looks funky because I need to press command I and invert it and really all I need to do now is just brush in the areas with black that is my sky because my sky layer is uh, being shown below and I'm going to loose this up oops and there we are. So we are pretty good right now. I might bring my opacity down pretty low and just kind of taper this area down here so that it blends a little bit more seamlessly. And that's pretty good there. So I have my new sky on top and I have my foreground on the bottom. I think that the foreground is a little too bright down here. So what I'm going to do is with the sky layer still showing, I'm going to keep that opacity at 20%, just kind of brush in because it's a darker layer. I want the focus to be pretty much on the lifeguard tower or the lifeguard shack, sorry, and the sky. So I'm kind of creating a vignette right now. And maybe brush a little bit back. So we are good there. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is add another curves and I want to apply it just to the foreground. So I am holding option and clicking here so when I make adjustments, this only applies to the foreground and you can actually get a better idea of where the mask is applying because it's still, it's, it's brightening up on the edge over here. In fact, you can see right now, 
So I just want to boost this up a little bit. And then I'm going to go back onto the mask and kind of smooth this out again. So with black selected, that's maybe too much. With the black selected now. Much better. Okay, so there is that blend. And the next thing that I want to do is actually dodge and burn my sky. So I'm going to select the sky layer <clears throat> and use my dodge tool. And I'm going to have this at mm, two or three percent, three percent if I can get it. Perfect and just kind of brush in the highlights. And this is only going to apply to my sky. So if I brush right here, it ain't doing anything. So I'm just gonna bring more detail out here. Maybe a little bit over here so it blends a little bit better. And then I am going to go down to dodge for burn rather and with my shadows at 3% bigger brush I'm just gonna go over the middle a little bit so there we are with that next thing I want to do is add a hue and saturation layer which I'm going to pin just to the sky and I want to bring up my yellows a little bit it's going to bring a little bit more color to the sky and I don't really want it to come in down here so I will use my brush tool and with a black brush just kind of brush it out down here and I also want to boost All right, well I just kind of want to play with my magentas a little bit I kind of want to bring it down just slightly So there we are with this, this scene right now. Um, let's see, the next thing that I want to do is... I'm going to play with Color Effects Pro. This is part of the Nick collection. You can buy it online, or if you've had it for a while and are smart enough, you don't have to buy it. You just won't get any updates. So every time this pops up, I just press later. <clears throat> and I don't even bother because everything that I want to do with Nick Collection is still there. So pretty much all I want to do is bring more detail into the sky. And I think I already edited this, so I'm going to leave these selections right here. But pretty much, I mean, it's pretty simple with the detail extractor, like play with the contrast. You can get more contrast. Play with the detail extractor, you can get more crazy detail. I don't want this amount of detail, it's a little too unrealistic to me. Most of it is, um, but around there is fine. And then I will press OK. And it's applying it to the whole image. I just want it to apply to the sky. So what I'm going to do is drag this down beneath my foreground. And I am going to apply a layer mask to that and invert it by pressing Command I and using my brush at a relatively low opacity. I'm just going to brush in some details to help just kind of boost the sky a little bit. And the other thing that I want to do is change this layer to luminosity because I do not want it to affect the color at all. I just want it to affect the detail of the image and maybe a little bit more of a boost. So once that is done, I am going to create a stamped visible layer by pressing command option, ooh, shift option command E which will apply everything to this layer. 
and I am going to do my star reduction method, which is pretty damn easy. What you want to do is go to select color range, make sure that your color range is highlights, and you want to just get a good selection of the galactic core. And by just playing around with the fuzziness and the range, obviously this big light pollution area is getting selected as well. I'm not too concerned about that right now. So I will press OK with that selection. I am then going to modify it a bit by doing modify expand, leave that at two pixels, and select modify feather and leave it at one pixel. And once I have that selection, I can press Command H to hide the selection for now. Go to Filter, Other, Minimum. And the range that I like to keep is between 0.5 or 0.4, roughly, and 0.9. The higher you go, I'll just boost in and show you. You get this crazy degradation that's going on where the sky kind of removes those highlights completely. Or the filter removes those highlights completely so I kind of like to keep it relatively subtle and let me just zoom out real quick and oops. just kind of keep a number that's like not too uh, impactful on the image so I think 0.6 might be pretty good in this instance I'll just press OK so it's applied and I'm going to zoom out so you can see what's going on you have a lot of detail on the core you've lost a lot of stars if I toggle this on and off you'll see like how much is reduced so what I'm going to do now is just apply a layer mask to this oops I don't want that selection anymore I'm going to apply a layer mask I'm going to invert it and I am, actually I'm not gonna invert it. I'm just gonna brush in right around the core to bring some detail of the stars back to the image. And then maybe, brush a little bit up here, just so it's not so fantastical looking. I think I might have dodged a little bit too much over here so I'm going to brush that out in a second, but I think, I think I'm pretty happy now. So I'm going to do another stamp visible layer by shift option command E. And because I messed up the first time, I am going to burn some highlights just in this area. So it's not so crazy looking. much better okay and you know right there Ooh. okay so way better looking oh, might have been a little too excessive whatever dodge and burn however you see fit I am going to just dodge a little bit to the highlights in here just to bring out a little bit more detail I am going to burn that horse because I love the detail of this horse right here. So, just with the burn tool, just a little bit. And just a little bit over the center as well. Okay, so pretty good. The other thing I want to do is make a new layer. So, Shift Command N, oops, Shift Option Command N. I'm sure there's an easier way, but I don't know. And what I want to do now is just kind of bring a little bit of these stars out. And I am going to open up my brush and with an opacity around 12, I am going to select a color from in here with the eyedropper and then find some stars and just pop a little bit of color on them just to boost them out a little bit more 
All right, dreamy, dreamy. All right, so with that all where I want it to be, I think I am, I think I am pretty much done at this point. I'm going to just flatten the image by right clicking on one image and flattening the image, discard the hidden layers because I don't need them. And I'm going to press command S and that will save it back into Lightroom. So there you are. You have a beautiful Milky Way image. This was done in Lightroom, Photoshop, and Starry Landscape Stacker. This is the method that I do for most of my Milky Way images. You can go in and play with the saturation more if you want to bump the, the that Milky Way core, maybe the vibrance, and play with it however you want. But this is my method. Hope you like this tutorial. I am glad to be out shooting again this year. I took a while off, but Milky Way season keeps me going and it is upon us. So good luck, everybody. And let me know if you have any questions. Leave a comment below and I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you.